hey, I want to tell you something. It's okay if you don't know what a triad inversion is. I got you. Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. Listen, if I were to ask you to play me a C major triad, for most of you, there is a certain shape associated with that sound, and you would play me a C major triad. But what if I were to ask you to play me the notes C, E, and G? Well, then you've got options, right? You've got like the C at the third fret of the A. You've got the second fret of the E, but you've also got the open E. You've got the fifth fret of the, of the D string, but you've also got the third fret of the E string. So knowing all the options available to you is key. And now that we have the notes of the C major triad, we have the notes C, E, and G. Volume. Those three notes make up a C major triad. Now. When I play them in that particular formation, I have the root position of a major triad, which also creates a certain shape, and I want you to understand what that shape looks like, right? C, E, G. If I put the C and the, sorry, if I put the E and the G on the same string, then I have this basic four fret span. And then the root, below that. So I'm at the third fret of the A string for the C, second fret of the D string for the E, and fifth fret of the E string for the G. Now, I can also change the position of the E and put it on the same string as the string I started on, in this case the A. This way I have um, the root at the third fret of the A string, and then I go up to the seventh fret of the A string to play E, the third. And then the fifth can stay in the same place. So that's my C major triad. Now, I've got the notes C, E, and G, as you can see there. But if I change the order of those notes and maybe, maybe play those three notes from the second note, the E, Well, that's the first inversion of a major triad. Basically starting your triad from the second note, the middle note, or the third, right? I have the third, the fifth, the root, and that's my first inversion of a major triad. If I go back to that other position where I play the E here at the seventh fret, then I play the G at the fifth fret of the D string, and then uh, the C at the 5th fret of the G string, that creates a certain shape. And I want to understand what that shape looks and feels like because now I know that wherever I play that shape, that's going to be the first inversion of a major triad. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So that's a first inversion. Root position, first inversion root position, first inversion. But I also want you to understand the notes that are happening below the root note. So if I play C, E, G, I can also play C, E, G. And that is still the first inversion of a major triad. If I take that whole shape up an octave, I have C, E at the 2nd fret, uh, and then G at the 5th fret of the D string. So that creates another shape that I want to understand. So now I want you to understand those two shapes for the, for the first inversion of a major triad. Basically going from the 3rd up to the 5th, up to the root. We have three positions for this in C major. We have the E 
at the seventh fret of the A string, and then the other two notes are the same, fifth fret of the D string and G string. Right? We can also change the position of this note E at the seventh fret of the A string and put it down at the second fret of the D string. Same E. And then the other two notes stay the same. Second fret of the D, fifth fret of the D, fifth fret of the G. E, G, C. So again, root position. First inversion. So this is one position of the first inversion. This is another position of the first inversion. And then the third position starts from the low E, goes up to the G on the E string at the third fret, and then home, back at C. So that's very cool. Now we have the root position in the first inversion of a major triad. I'm just gonna stick with the first inversion for now. Maybe in another video I'll cover the second version, but I really wanna focus on this and show you how you can create like some super cool bass lines using these, uh, these shapes. All right, we've done C major, let's move up and do D minor. So the notes of a D minor triad are D, the minor third, which is F, and then the fifth, which is A, D, F, A, fifth fret of the A, third fret of the D, second fret of the G. Got that? That's my D minor triad. Root, minor third, fifth. So that's my triad, but what if I, what if I just asked you to play these three notes? D, F, A. We have options, don't we? We've got, we've got our D here, we've got the open D, we've got F at the third fret of the D string, and we've got F at the first fret of the E string. And then we've got, whoops, and then we've got the second fret of the G, which is A, and, of course, our trusty open A. So when I think about all those notes, all those options that we have available to us, then then let's put the shapes together. I've got as my triad, but I don't necessarily have to play these notes in order like this. I can still play a D minor triad by playing D, F, A, or D, F, A. There are all these different ways to interpret that. So again, that's the root position of the triad. If I want to play the first inversion, what do I do? I start from the middle note, that minor third, and then I play the other two notes after that. So in this case, if we have a, a D minor triad as D, F, and A, that means I want to play F, A, and D as my first inversion of that D minor triad. What does that sound like? It sounds like this. I've got F. Let's say I start with the low F on uh, the first fret of the E string. And then I can just play the two open strings, A and D, totally fine. I can play F at the third fret of the D string and then play the open strings. And that's still the first inversion of my D minor triad. Is that making sense? I hope it all makes sense because it's really great to know these, uh, these shapes. So when you, when you take these three notes, Try to put them in different order and try to understand where your, where your options are. It's great to write this stuff down for yourself. Make your own notes so that when you see these notes on a piece of paper, you can understand like where they're going to be on the fingerboard and how you can put together the different shapes to form the, f the root position of the triad and the first inversion of the triad. That's all we're going to deal with today. Root position and first inversion. Now. Check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into practical use. And what I'll do is I'll play like a simple progression that goes back and forth between C major and D minor. And all I'm going to do is play the root position of the triad first and then the first inversion of the triad. C major to D minor. Back and forth.
sounds like this. So I'm gonna leave it at that, my friends and neighbors. Usually at this point in the video, I, I give like this whole spiel about likes, subscribe, donate, all that stuff. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I wanna keep these videos nice and short. And, uh, and all of that information is going to be linked in, in the description box below. And that is that. Uh, thank you for visiting me once again here in the Brownstone. My name is Rich Brown. And uh, I hope you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.